The answer should have been inflation, people's preference, and risk. So, we said the last time an important uh, financial instrument to understand is the US government bonds, also called the treasury. So, we have 10 year bond is for 10 year. What does that mean? It means the government will pay you back the money after how long? 10 years. 10 years. Okay, it has a coupon. Usually it has a coupon. The coupon may be 2%. That means it will pay you 2% every year as an interest payment. Okay? And then this is going to have a price. So let's say that it's $1 million. Okay, with 2% coupon every year. Then people decide the price at the auction. Okay, if I pay less than $1 million, let's say I pay $900,000, okay, then we're going to have a higher yield. The yield will be higher. The yield is the real interest rate we're getting. Okay? Coupon, they're going to pay us. If the coupon is 2% of $1 million, right, that's going to be uh, $20,000 $20, a year. Okay? Do you think $20,000 a year is a good income? No? So if you're a really rich person and you have $1 million, you could just sit at home, right? And invest your money in US government bonds. And you're sure you're going to get $20,000 every year. But you don't think that's enough. So how much money do you need then? To have a, you can just retire comfortably. How much money do you need? Two million? Forty thousand dollars a year? Is that enough? For you? If I gave you two million dollars now, you could invest that in a US government bond and get forty thousand dollars a year. Then you don't need to work for the rest of your life. Is that okay? Forty thousand dollars a year, is that enough? To live comfortably? Maybe, okay? So that's what can happen, right? A lot of pension funds, you understand pension funds? Pension funds invest in the US government bonds and they get this coupon every year, coupon payment. But the real interest rate is the yield. It depends on the price of the bond. If I pay less than the face value, the yield is going to be higher than uh, 2%, right? Because I just paid $900,000, I get 2% a year, but at the end, I'm going to get back $1 million. So I'm getting more money here too. So I have to add that onto the coupon. That's going to be higher yield. However, if the price today is $1.1 million, the yield is going to be lower than the coupon. Okay? So this bond is sold at an auction. We have these coupons and yields and the time. So the coupon, whether the bond has a coupon or not, the amount of the bond and the time are the key things for a bond. Okay, and the reason we're talking about this as an important financial instrument is that it has no risk. Okay, it's seen as having no risk. So this is just the yield on the bond is going to tell us inflation plus the real interest rate. Okay? That's the yield on the 10-year American government bond will tell us. Not the coupon. Coupon is decided before they sell the bond. Okay? Uh, so, it's the yield is the real interest rate we're getting. They also, the US also have a bond where they will uh, com compensate us for inflation. So that's a financial instrument which has no risk and no inflation and just tells us the real interest rate. It's called the TIPS. So those are important financial instruments in finance. Okay, everything starts when we measure the return we want on an investment. Everything starts from a US government bond because I can make this money with no risk. Okay, so if I if you have two million dollars and she has a company and she tells you, good news, I can make you a return of two percent a year if you invest in my company. 
Where are you going to invest your money? In her company or in a US government bond? You have $2 million. She tells you, I have a company. My company is going to make a return of 2% a year. Okay? Where are you going to invest your money? In her company or in the US government bond? Why? No risk, right? So the point is, anything else is going to have risk. So you're going to have to offer him a higher return. You're going to have to say, I'm going to make a profit of 10% a year okay, in my business. And then he invests in your business instead of the US government bond. So it's important to know about the US government bond. Does everybody understand what a bond is? Bond is you lend money. Do you understand lending money? Hmm? You, who are you lending money to? In this case, who are you lending money to? To the bank? No. What government? US government. US government. Are they going to be able to pay you back? Yes. Why? Why is the why is the, do we trust the US government will pay us back? There's a stable economy, a strong economy, with companies like big companies like Microsoft, right? And other companies. And the main point is the government has the power to tax. So the government can tax the companies. The government can tax the people. That means the government is going to get the money back and pay you back. Okay? In the US. Maybe not in other countries. Other countries might have default risk. Okay? But the US doesn't have any default risk. Currently. So we talked about this the last time. So then let's start about talk about how to calculate. How can we calculate uh, the present and future value? Okay. So we have a choice. We can get either fifteen thousand dollars today or eighteen thousand dollars in four years. So we have to make a decision. Which one will we choose? So we need to find the value of fifteen thousand dollars in the future, or the value of $18,000 in the present. Okay? If we find one of those, we can compare them. Right now we can't compare them, because they're different times. And money has different value at different times. But we have to bring the money to the same time. We can either bring the present money into the future, or we, more commonly, we bring the future money back to the present. Okay? So there are equations we can use to do that. We need to know the interest rate and the time, and we can put it into the equation. Future value is the present value times one plus the interest rate to the square of the time. Okay, present value is the future value divided by, because it's going to be a lower number, it's going to be a lower number, right? One plus the interest rate, okay? to the power of the time. So if we do this kind of a calculation, then we have 15,000 is the present value. Is this number going to be worth more or worth less in the future? If we have 15,000 today and the interest rate is 4%, will we have more money or less money in four years? More money, okay, it's going to be a higher number. We get 4% every year, and it's compounded. Do you understand compound interest? I get 4% the first year. Then I don't just find 4% of 15,000. I find 4% of 15,000 plus 4%, okay? So 4% of 15,000 is going to be multiplied by four and take away two zeros, okay? So it's going to be six, this is 60. 600. Okay? So does everybody understand about finding the percentages? Right? Multiply by the number, divide by 100. Okay? So we, we get 60,000 if we multiply by 4. 60,000 divided by 10 is 6,000. 60,000 divided by 100 is 600. Okay? So that means that next year, we're going to have 15,600. And then we get 4% of that. Okay? Do you understand? And so on. But luckily we have an equation which makes that easier. Just one plus the interest rate to the power of the time. So it's going to be 
15,000 multiplied by 1 plus 1 plus 4. When we write a percentage in a decimal point, we use two decimal points, right? 4% is 0 0.04. So a lot of people make a mistake here. They write 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.04. 0 0.4 is 40%. 0 0.04 is 4%, okay? And then we put that, how long is the time? By 4, okay? So this is going to be 1.044, okay? Then on your calculator, at least on the computer calculator, if you use the scientific calculator, do you know how to use the calculator on the computer? We have to search for the calculator. Okay, <laughs> Shangi. Right? Bogey. Guahakyon. Right? So that's how you do in the computer, right? You can have your phone or a scientific calculator. So you'll need a calculator because during the exam you need to make calculations. Okay? So you need a Guahakyong calculator. So you can do this kind of thing. Okay? So maybe your phone has a Guahakyong calculator. You need to check, right? You'll find out by practicing. So here we can see we have 1.04 and then x to the power of y, right? x to the power of y, this signal means to the power of 4 equals 1.169, okay? So we've got 15,000 multiplied by 1 point, let's call it 1.7. When you're doing the calculations, we don't need to go past two decimal points. Two decimal points is enough, okay? So let's multiply this by 15,000 and see what we get. So 174547, that is the future value. So which one are we going to choose then? 15,000 today or 18,000 after four years? Why? It's higher, more valuable. It's higher than if we put 15,000 in the bank at 4% interest, we'll only get this much, okay? But if we get 18,000, it's more than this, okay? So, we also need to do the other calculation, which is this time the number will be smaller. 18,000, we already found out this number is 1.17, but this time we're going to put it on the bottom. So it's going to be 15,000 divided, or 18,000 divided by 1.17, okay? So it's going to be the future value over one plus the interest rate to the power of n. We already found 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n, okay, which is 1.17. So we can do 18,000 divided by 1.17. So 15384, okay? So we can see that's higher than 15,000. So it means that the value of 18,000 after four years in today's money is 15,384. Do you follow? Yes? So we choose uh, the second one. Okay? So this is simple present value and simple future value. So from the calculation, we now know our choices between receiving this much or this much today, or this much or this much in four years. Of course, we should choose to get paid after four years. Does anybody have any question about that? Simple present value or simple future value? <laughs> so, uh, just, we're going to look at the effective interest rate next. So, it makes a difference whether we get paid the interest monthly or yearly. Okay? Uh, say that in the above example, we get paid 12 monthly payments, 
on the 4% annual interest rate. What is the effective interest rate? Okay. So if we got paid uh, 4%, we said that's 15,000 by 4 was 600 a year. Right? At the end of the year, we get paid the interest. But it may be we get paid the interest twice a year. Okay? So we are going to get, after six months, we will get 15,000 with 2% interest. Okay? After six months, 2% interest. That would be 300. But we get paid this 300 in the middle of the year. So now our next interest is going to be 15,300 multiplied by 2%. Okay? So we're going to end up with slightly higher, slightly higher number. Okay? That's going to be 306. Okay? So at the end of the year, instead of 600, we now have 606. Because why? Because we got paid the interest in the middle of the year and the end of the year. Instead of just at the end of the year. Okay? So it means that uh, if you get your interest rate monthly, it's actually slightly higher. So we can use this equation to calculate what's called the effective interest rate. Okay? So it's 1 plus your stated annual interest rate over n. n is the number of months in this case. Minus 1. So, if we get 12 monthly payments at 4%, we just use the equation. So we have 1 plus 4.04 over 12, okay, to the power of 12 minus 1, okay. So if we do this calculation, we're going to end up with 4.07%. So this is just calculating an effective interest rate. So you can change, change it if we're getting paid monthly interest instead of yearly interest. So here's an example on the table. If we get paid 10% a year, we get an effective rate of 10%. If we get paid 10% twice a year, this is the formula, it's going to be 10.25%. If we get paid the annual rate of 10% monthly, it's going to be 10.47% and daily 10.51%. So it's going to be different depending on how frequently we get paid the interest. So the next step is present value of multiple cash flows. So this is a more common situation in the real life. So in the real life, we have a company, company A, and we have to guess the revenue. So we have the years, year one, year two, year three. So the company makes 100 million in year one, 200 million in year two, and 250 million in year three. And we want to find the present value. How much are these revenues or sales worth in today's money. Okay, so we just learned how to do the present value equation. Okay, present value is going to be the future value over one plus the interest rate by the time. Okay, so we just use this equation for each one and we just add together. It's as simple as that. Okay, so we find the present value for year one, the present value for year two, and the present value for year three separately and then we add them together to get the total. So this sign just means the sum of. Sum of means adding together. So when we have a group of present values, we use the same equation, okay? But we use, we sum them together, just add them together over different years. As we have, we can have completely random values every year, there's no equation we can use to help us there. Okay? We just have to add them, calculate each one and add it together. Okay? This could be 112, right? Could be any number. So there's no equation we can use to make it shorter. We have to find each one individually 
and then add the present values together to get the total present value. So let's uh, practice these questions. You can discuss with your partner. What is the present value of $1,000 we expect to receive in three years with a discount rate of 10%? Or so you can check in your book to find the equations. So we can see the equations of the present value on page 20 in your book. Okay. So look at page 20 in your book. Okay. And then just put the number into the equation and calculate the answer. Okay. So I'm going to walk around and I'd like to see every. I, I wouldn't like to see somebody who's not doing this, right? Because if you have this question on the exam, you have to try to practice it in the class. Okay? If you don't try to practice it in the class, it's going to be hard to do it in the exam. Sure, <laughs> 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 これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ、これ
I want you to come up here and write on the board. Right? To show the students the answer. How did you calculate? So, uh, Shim Song Nin, can you write the answer here on the board? Take your note and write down the answer. Hmm? You're not finished yet? Okay, take another 30 seconds to finish. All you need to do is put the numbers into the equation. Yes. What? Uh, it's not in the book. Just in PPT. This equation is in the book on page 20, the first equation. Present value equals future value over 1 plus the interest rate. Are you looking at page 20 of your book? Are you looking at page 20 in your book? Yes? Can you see the equation? The first one, yes. Yes. See that on the board? Yes. <laughs> hey, somebody help him, what's this number? 1.1 to the power of 3, what's the answer? What is 1.1 to the power of 3? 1.1 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1.313 1
a year, it's going to be worth about that much more, Ten to about more than 30% more after 10 years. Yes, right? It's going to be worth, this is about 30, more than 30% higher, so 3% a year compound interest is going to be more than 30%. So we have to just think also to check our answer, it helps. Okay, so the last part is what if the interest is paid monthly? So. We, can, we just looked at finding the effective interest rate. So we have two choices here. First choice is we can find the monthly interest rate, divide 3 by 12, and then calculate monthly. Use 10 years is 120 months. Okay? So we could have 3 divided by 12, which is 0.25% as our interest rate. 0 0.0025, uh, right? as the interest rate, and we could have 120 as the time. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to calculate the effective interest rate. Okay? So if the interest is paid monthly, that's going to be 3 over 12, 12 minus 1. Okay? Do you understand? So make this calculation. You can do it two ways. Find the effective rate, or you can use the monthly interest rate and months as the end. Okay. 
Нет, он просто сказал, там надо три писать. Ну вот в этой форме. Your phone should have the scientific calculation, right? Some people here have the. You should be able to do it in the power of 12. Thank you. 
Did you write it down anywhere? Okay, here's the point. When you're doing your calculation in the test, don't just do everything in your calculator and write it over at the end, right? Because then I have no evidence that you did the calculation. If you write down the numbers as you go, then at least I can see where you made a mistake. Okay, you made a silly mistake here, then you can still get some points. But if you just write down the number at the end, it's the wrong number, I can't give any points. Okay? So you need to write down the things as you go. Okay, so let's help them now. Did anybody find out what's this number? Point, this is 1 over 4, right? So it's point zero zero two five. So 1 point zero, 1 plus that's going to be 1 point zero zero two five. Okay, to the power of 12. To the power of 12. Minus 1 equals. So what's the number 1.0025 to the power of 12? 1 point, 1 0 0.03, minus 1. Okay, equals 0 0.0304, which is 3.04%. Okay? So the effective interest rate is 3.04%. Does everybody understand that? Okay? So this is not that complicated. All you have to do, what's the interest rate? Right? Look at the equation. Put in the interest rate in the equation. Put in the time in the equation and make the calculation. Okay? Once you have the effective interest rate, we just do the same calculation as we did before. But 3.04% instead of 3%. Okay? Do you have any questions about that? Okay, let's take a break then for 10 minutes.